In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural hammered copper material. And then after we create the material, I'll be showing you how to join it together into a custom node group. So we have the scale value, so you can change the size of the material depending on the size of your object. And then we have two colors. So color one is going to be inside those hammered parts. Sometimes I find this texture kind of has a little bit of a darkness or those dots look a little bit darker. And then we also have color two, which is just the main metal color. Then we have the metallic value, so you can make it more or less metallic. We also have the roughness of the metal and then we also have this clear coat here Which is an extra layer of shininess and then we also have the clear coat roughness Then we have the bump strength to make it more bumpy or more smooth And then we also just have this noise bump strength just to add a little bit of noise to the surface And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase this procedural material You can get that on my gumroad store and patreon page the links are in the description And you can also check out my ultimate blunder procedural material pack to purchase all of my materials and then before before we start this part, I wanted to let you know about my recently released course, my Rusty Fire Hydrant Blender tutorial series. So that is a four part tutorial series and it's all step by step and in real time. And in the course, I show you how to create this Rusty Fire Hydrant. So we start by modeling the Fire Hydrant and then we set up some procedural materials and then we do texture painting and we paint on the model where we want the rust to be and where we want the paint to be worn away. If you'd like to check out the course trailer video, I'll have the link to it in the description and I'll also have the links to the product pages in the description. So real quick, I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I did. So I went to the add menu and I went to mesh and I added an icosphere and then if you click right behind me on the add icosphere settings, I turned the subdivisions up to six so it is nice and smooth and round and then I shaded the object smooth. And then to model this better to the real life scale in Blender, I'm gonna scale this object down by 0.2 and then I will press control A and apply the scale. And then to model the vase, I thought it would be cool to add it to a vase because vases sometimes have this hammered copper So I went to the add menu and I just added a cylinder and you can just go into edit mode And I just scaled the cylinder way down and then you can just go into wireframe And you can just box select the top of it and you can bring that down And then you can just kind of extrude it and scale it up and extrude it and scale it And you can just model it to the shape of the vase so here is the vase model that I created. And then to give it a bit of thickness after you model it, you can go here to the modifier properties and you can add the solidify modifier. And then also just to smooth it out, you can add the subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out. So that's what I did for the vase model. Then I also added a camera here and I just pointed the camera right at the objects. And if you click on the camera and go to the object data properties of the camera, I turned the focal length to 80 just to kind of zoom the camera in a bit. Now as for the lighting over here on the world properties, I added in this machine Shop 02 1K HDRI from polyhaven.com. So I'll have the link in the video description if you'd like to download it. And I just downloaded the 1K HDR version. So once you download the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot here next to color, and you can choose environment texture, and then just click on the open button and open up the HDRI. So I'm in the shading workspace, so I have the 3D viewport right over here, and I'm in the rendered mode, and then I have the shader editor right over here. So I'll just click on new to add a new material, and I can click and drag here on the materials and drop it onto this material, or drop it onto that object, so they both have the same material. And then I'm just gonna rename this to hammered copper. And then I'll also be using the node wrangler add-on, so you can click on edit you can go to the preferences and then over here on the add-ons tab if you go to the search you can search for node and just enable the node wrangler add-on and i'll show you how to use it in the video so to start off i'll go to the add menu and i'm going to search for a voronoi texture let's drop the voronoi here and i can hold down the control and shift key and select the voronoi texture to preview it now you can see on some of these objects you can see that the voronoi is being stretched a little bit so if i select the voronoi texture and press control t that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping node and I want to plug the object into the vector and that way it's using the object coordinates So it's going to place the texture on the object more evenly and then we'll change some of the settings So I'm going to turn the scale to 70 and then I'm going to turn this f1 here to smooth f1 instead And then on this smoothness here I'm going to turn this to a 0.6 So it is a bit smooth, but not quite as much and then this random value here I find that actually turning the random value down a bit to like a 0.8 looks a bit better So you can see if I turn the random value all the way down you can clearly see those lines there and that doesn't look that great but if I turn it all the way up it's just a little bit too random for me so I like a randomness of 0.8. So 
So let's plug the distance here into the normal to give it some bump and I'll control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. But you can see that there's some weird shading issues. That's because we need to search for a bump node and we're gonna put the bump node between the Voronoi and the principled shader and the distance needs to be going into the height value to convert it to bump data. So now you can see it looks very bumpy and let's turn the bump strength way down to a 0 0.08 so it's not quite as strong. And then also to see it a bit better, let's take the base color here and for now we're just gonna make it kind of like a dark color and kind of make it a bit brown so we can kind of see that better. Now I do want to kind of change the shape of the bump. So to do this, we're going to search for a map range node, which we can use to change the colors. So we're going to put this between the Voronoi and the bump. Now we can take the from min value and we can turn this down and up. You can see that's going to change it. But first let's uncheck the clamping so it won't clamp the values. So now I can turn the from min down and up. And I'm going to turn the from min to a negative 4.3. So a negative 4.37. And then here on the two min here, you can see I can drag this around and that's going to kind of change it. And I'm kind of doing this to make it more smooth. So on the two min, I'm going to turn this to a 0.78, just a 0.78. So now you can see the edges here of the hammered copper looks a bit more smooth. Whereas if I just mute the node, you can see it looks a bit more sharp, but by using the map range there, we're kind of smoothing it out by dragging those values up. Now I do want to make it even more smooth. So I'm also going to search for the RGB curves node, and we're going to put this RGB curves between the Voronoi and the map range. And I can click here to add a dot, and then I can drag this dot kind of up here, and I can click here to add another dot, and I can drag this dot way down here. So by adding this curve here, you can see it's gonna smooth it out even more. You can see here it is without it, so it kind of looks a bit sharp on the edges, but then here it is before, you can see it looks quite a bit more smooth. So I now want to take the Voronoi distance here, and I want to put that into the base color of the principal shader, but then I want to change the colors. So I first want to search for a color ramp to kind of change the contrast. So I'll put the color ramp here between the Voronoi and the base color, stick it there. And then I'm going to hold down the control key and click here to add a tab here. And then this tab I'm going to drag over a bit to make it a bit more contrasty and sharp. And then this tab here, which is kind of gray in the middle, I'm just gonna make this kind of a mid gray color. And the hex value for this color is gonna be 939393. So you can punch that in there if you wanna use the same hex value that I'm using. So now to make the custom colors, I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for a mix color. And we'll put that here after the color ramp. And the color ramp color is going to go into the factor to control what part is gonna be color A and what part is gonna be color B. So now I'll make the two colors and they're gonna be kind of like these brownish colors. And color A is going to be a hex value of 6F. 4C34. And then color B is going to be slightly brighter. This is going to be a hex value of 7C553A. And then to make this look like metal, let's turn the metallic value all the way up to 1. And also I'll leave the roughness at 0.5 for now because I like how that looks. Now let's also open up the code here because I want to add some clear coat. And the clear coat is basically going to be an extra layer of shininess. So it's going to look like maybe it has some sort of painted finish on it, which is really shiny. So I'll turn the coat weight all the way up to 1. And then the coat roughness, I'll turn to a 0.3. Now one problem with this is that it kind of makes the bump be less strong because it's adding this kind of layer of shininess. You can see if I turn the roughness down, you can still see the bump, but it almost looks like there's this thick layer of plastic or something over the top of it. So what I'm gonna do is take this bump normal and I'm gonna put that into the same normal here of the clear coat. So that way both the clear coat and the normal shader, they're both gonna be using the same normal value or the same bump there. So you can see it still looks pretty bumpy even though we have the clear coat. And then I also want to add just a little bit of surface bump with some noise. So what I'm going to do is select the bump node and I'll duplicate it and drop it here. We can put the normal into the normal of this one. So they're both going into the normals here, the two normals of the shader. So now we can add another value into the height value. So to do this, I'm going to search for a noise texture. We can just drop the noise texture here and we can also use the same object coordinates. So we're going to take the mapping vector and we're going to put that into the vector, the noise. Let's control shift and select the noise to preview it. And I can change some of the noise noise settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to a 40 and then I'm going to turn the detail to the max of 15 and the roughness I'll turn to like a 0.55 so it has a little bit more roughness. 
So now the noise texture factor can go to the height value of the bump, and I can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. And then here on the bump, I wanna turn this to a very, very small number. So on the second bump here, I'm gonna turn it to a 0 0.03, and that which is gonna have a very subtle roughness there, or a little bit of bump there over the surface. And that is it for the procedural material. So I'll now show you how to join it together into a custom node group. So I'll click and drag to box select all the nodes, and I'll press Control G to join it together into a node group. And if you hit the tab key with the node group selected, that's going to go in and out of the node group. So I'll drag the node group over here. Let's drag it out to make it bigger. And then I can click on the name here. Actually, I'm going to copy the name here. So press Control C and then press Control V there to paste the hammered copper name into the node group. Let's hit the tab key to go into the node group, and I'll hit the N key to open up the side panel. And if you click here on the group tab, you can see there's these group sockets. And I'm going to double click on this, and I'll rename this to shader because I like that better. So now over here, we have this group input, and we can plug values up to the group input to control them outside of the node group. So this mapping node is plugged up to all the textures, so the scale value can go into the group input. Then I can click on the scale here, and I don't want it to be three values, I want it to be one instead. So we'll click on the vector here, and we're going to change it to float instead. And by turning it to float, it's just going to be one value. Now the default value here, we can turn to one, and then I can hit tab to go out of the node group, and we need to turn the scale back to one. So now we can go into the node group. And then I want to control the colors, so I'll drag the group input right up here, and I can put color A into the extra socket and color B into the extra socket. Let's rename these, so I'll rename this to color 1, and this one here I'll rename to color 2. And then let's also plug the metallic value into the extra socket and the roughness into the extra socket. We'll drag this down here to the clear coat, and we can take the coat weight, put that into the extra socket. And I want to rename this to clear coat because I just like that better. So I'm going to rename that to clear coat. Then we have the roughness here for the clear coat. So I'll put that into the extra socket. And this, I'll double click on it to rename it. And I'll rename it to clear coat roughness. And then also I want to control the bump strength. So I'll first take the first bump strength and I'll put that into the extra socket. And I'm just going to call this bump strength. And then I also want to control the noise bump strength, so that's the second one here. So I'll put the strength into the extra socket, and I'll rename this to noise bump strength. All right, I'll drag the node group back over here, and I'll hit the N key to close the side panel, and I'll hit the tab key to go outside the node group. We can now review the final material. So we have the overall scale, and then we also have color 1, and then we also have color 2. Then we have the metallic value and the roughness. We also have the clear coat and the clear coat roughness. And then we have the bump strength. And if you turn it way up, that actually looks pretty cool. You can see there's all these little circles here. So that looks kind of cool, but I don't want it to be that strong. I like it as a more subtle value. And then we also have the noise bump strength. So that's gonna be it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase this material to use in your projects, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. The links are in the description. And you can also check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials pre-set up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. And you can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create more materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.